Hi kids, I'm Michael Bain and as always welcome to Triggered coming to you from Dragon House Studios. It's a secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado where I'm happy to say there's hope. We may be let out of house arrest very, very soon. And boy, oh boy, I can't wait to start shooting matches again. You know, all the matches have been shut down for this whole, gosh, last two months. So, I wanted to show you, as I teased you last week, these two revolvers. Uh, I think you're familiar with at least one of them. This is a Smith & Wesson 617 here, which is a 10-shot, 22 revolver. And it was built by Scott Folk and Randy Lee at Apex Tactical specifically to shoot in Rimfire Challenge Mechanical Division. Now, Mechanical Division and Rimfire Challenge means that you can't use a semi-auto. You got to use something that's operated mechanically. Of course, a revolver, you're pulling the trigger. For the rifle, either lever action, bolt action, pump action, something like that. Uh, when we started Rimfire Challenge, we thought that would be a really cool division. Nobody shot it. I mean, me and maybe four other people nationally, which is how, which is how I became the last mechanical division champion. The last match that sanctioned mechanical division, I won. Well, I won mechanical division. But I've decided this year that we're going to film the Rimfire Challenge uh, World Championships at uh, Old Fort Gun Club, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, my friend Rob Elliott there, of course, sits with me on the board of directors, Rimfire Challenge Shooting Association. And I decided that whether we have a mechanical class or not, I think we do have a mechanical class back in because Rob and I like it, but <laughs> I'm going to shoot mechanical anyway because this is a revolver year for me. So right now I'm agonizing and that's what I wanted to talk to you about this morning. This is one of the best competition revolvers I've ever seen in my life. The 617 Smith & Wesson is absolutely incredibly, oh golly gee, flawless because you know what? Scott Folk does wicked good work. And uh, I've got all the accoutrements. These are the speed loaders for the little puppy. They're from Speed Bees. And of course, you can see the 10 rounds of 22 in there. It's just a matter of slipping it in the cylinder and pushing down, and they pop in. Uh, I have a loading block for them as well, where I can load five speed loaders, which is what you need on the line at Steel Challenge. You know, you're going to have five runs, and uh, you're going to toss your worse. But um, that way, you're ready to reload them. However, and we're going to talk about this more in, in this next segment, what I'm going to be shooting in other competition this year, including, including i core Steel Challenge, and maybe USPSA, I don't know, is the Ruger Super GP100 in 9mm. They're going to be showing you, a, it's come back from Cylinder and Slide prop a shop from uh, Sean McKee, she, she, Sean McSheehy, Sean, change your name, Luke Smith but um, who does the work on my competition revolvers. He just does a superb job. So I thought, well, maybe what I need to do is shoot a GP100 in 22, which I do have and have had had for years. This is the GP100 in, in uh, 22. It's also a 10-shot revolver, and of course, because of the perversity of the universe, these speed loaders, which, by the way, are expensive, like $39 a pop, don't fit. So <laughs> I will need a new set of speed loaders, which I suspect I'll be uh, ordering today. And this gun is not nearly as smooth as this gun. This is a purpose-built race gun. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's slick. So um, I'm probably going to do some work on my 22 myself. I'm going to replace the springs and uh, polish up the interior of it. It's kind of touch and go. With anytime you, anytime you tune a, um, a 22 caliber revolver, it becomes this massive weird crapshoot because every 22 is has different essentially uh, on the priming compounds on the rim. Some are hard, Wolf, CCI. Uh, some are softer, some of the Federal, some of the Winchester, say Gym Tech Match, which is typically what I'll shoot is Gym Tech Subsonic. But um, you have to make sure that the gun is going to fire all 10 rounds. And that means there's a certain amount of experimentation involved in it. So I'm actually looking forward to that. I mean, I, I uh, as you may imagine, I enjoy tinkering with guns. And, um, you know, this kind of gave me a thrill for the Rimfire Challenge this year for the Worlds. I will be shooting a mechanical rifle, a bolt action rifle, an amazing custom rifle, rifle from Volkortsen. And I'm exciting to be shooting with Volkortsen again. I mean, I'm very excited about that. I, I, Scott Volkortsen's a dear friend, the people there. I love him. I love shooting this rifle. 
my understanding is it's been shipped. I should have it in the next couple of days. And hey, you will see it dissected and shot right here on Triggered as soon as it gets here. And since we're talking about a little bit Rimfire Challenge stuff, I wanted to talk about a sponsor's product. <laughs> There's a shock, right? Tandem Cross, been a sponsor for a long time. I'm a very much of a fan of Tandem Cross products. And because they're smart, you've seen various and sundry uh, connectors for 1022 magazines. These are magazines for 1022, right? And any of the, ma any of the guns that take the 1022 platform magazines. Uh, you have adapters where you can clamp three of the Ruger single 10 round magazines together to make a 30 round mag. Well, Tandem Cross had been very successful with a double mag, and so they created their own Tandem mag, the triple, triple magazine here. And it's clear plastic, which I really, really appreciate. You can also dye it egg color. <laughs> I've never done that, but you can get Ritz egg dye, and you can dye these cute, fun colors that will match your outfit. Support styles, everything. When you buy one of these triple mags, which again, I, I like them a lot, Tandem Cross includes this carrier. Now the carrier is pretty nice because what happens is you go so when you walk to the line at the Rimfire Challenge you're not juggling a lot of magazines. You have two of these on your belt and you have six loaded rounds which is handy. Same thing on, on my own course, on my challenge course, on my property. You need multiple magazines to get through it. Perfect. Perfect. Now if you've got a lot of single magazines and you say that's a pretty cool idea Michael, I like it. Tandem Cross also offers this. Essentially, the same package where you got the carrier and you've got the, the triple clear magazines, but they're empty. You can take out the guts of your 1022 magazines and put them into here to basically create this. And you're like, how do you do that? So, well, I don't know. I've never done it before. However, Tandem Cross also sells a toolkit with everything in it that you need to disassemble and clean your 1022 magazines, which you do need to occasionally do, because uh, otherwise, here's a hint, they stop working. So you have a kit to disassemble the magazines and clean them, and you can also replace the springs. Tandem Cross has a set of X, you know, springs here, power, more powerful springs. So if you're going to shoot Rimfire Challenge, you're going to be in the wood, woods with a 1022, take a look at these Tandem Cross products. Uh, they're great people, good friends of mine, they do a good job. We've got lots more when Triggered returns. This week's Triggered is brought to you by Ammo Man. What's in your ammo can? Tandem Cross, making good guns even better. Lipsies and their wonderful Guns of the Month. Lucid Optics, on target, under budget. Cimarron Firearms, the leader in innovation in OS firearms. And Franklin Armory, creating some of the most innovative guns in America. Welcome back to Triggered. Of course, you can find us on michaelbain.tv, youtubeeverest.com, and coming up, a couple of more really special places. If you remember back in the day, go back, I don't know, six, six, uh, five years, six years, something like that, long time back, we talked about this GP100. And this is GP100 was built by Cylinder and Slide Shop, I believe by uh, uh, Sean McShehe as well, but he had input into it. And I told you that I thought this was probably the best competition GP100 ever made. I shot it in i Worlds. It shot great. Me, not so much. But I don't know, I no longer believe it's the greatest GP100 in the world. In fact, I think we're going to go here. This is my super GP100 in 9mm. It runs off 8 shot moon clips. And it is from the, the, the Ruger Custom Shop. And one thing that you can see on the side here, it's kind of a, we've shown it to you before, it's a special gun. Serial number is uh, CS Custom Shop 600001. I don't know how I ended up with this gun. A lot of people said, you should put this in your safe and save it because it's a collector's item. And I said, I shoot guns, I, I don't save them. But this gun just came back from Cylinder and Slide Shop for a couple of reasons. Um, there's an action job on it and it, um, it has an amazing action. One of the things that, that Sean and I talked about is which primers we were going to make sure that this thing popped. 
so we, you know, we set, you know, Sean set the action specifically for the competition loads. And 9 millimeter is going to, it's going to be a little harder. You know, you, uh, federal primers in the 38, you know, you can drop them on a rock and they'll pop. The other thing is that I want to shoot open. I will be shooting a hollow sun green on this gun. And because it's a hybrid between a Super Red Hawk and a GP100, neither the Super Red Hawk nor the GP100 sight mounts would fit. So this is from EG, EGW, my friend George at EGW, and basically Sean machined it to fit the top of this gun. So it will carry the hollow sun sight on it. And the other thing Sean did that I want to talk to you guys about, like, wow, look at the checkering. Sean, Sean do himself some checkering. He, Sean also, on the, as a saw, an aside, as a gunsmith, makes custom grips. But he said, can I checker it? Because he's got these amazing walnut grips on it, once again, because it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And uh, I said, sure, yeah, go ahead. I figured he'd checker a couple of panels on it. Instead, if you look at this checkering, it's where he's cut these curves here. You'll notice how the curves kind of match the flow of the grips. That's really hard. And so this is like complete checkering, 360 degrees, all perfectly cut against these curves, which match the grip. It's beautiful. And I have to tell you this, and Sean will appreciate this too. It's so beautiful, I can't shoot this on a competition gun. Um, because one thing you'll notice if you look at kind of my old GP100, which you won't go into here, it's beat up. It's dinged, it's scratched, there's scratches on the grips and everything. That's because it's a competition gun and competition guns get the crap beat out of them. So what I'm going to do is probably put these big fat hogue, big butt grips onto this gun, take these beautiful hogue grips that have, that have been checkered by Sean and put them on my GP110 millimeter, which is a gun that I occasionally carry around. Uh, it's a great gun, it's a blued gun, these grips are gonna look great on it, but uh, all I can say is I, I truly believe this may well be the finest GP100 on Earth. I'm proud to have it. I hope I can do it justice. I'm hoping I can spend a weekend with Dave Alasso. Of course, is on Team Ruger, the chief revolver guy, because Dave can help me, and he's helped me before, and I will need help. Touch on a couple of new products here before we get out of here. Um, this is, which you all will undoubtedly recognize, one of my SIG 365s. I have two. Uh, one I carry in a belt holster, either IWB or uh, um, OWB. The other one is dedicated. This is a SIG 365 SAS dedicated as a pocket pistol. You recognize it. How about this one? That there's a BB gun. Uh, I thought about playing uh, Roger Allen Wade's great song, I'm Going to Shoot You in the Bleep with a BB gun, but I didn't. So this gun, I've been waiting for it for now for April, May, June, July, August, September, May, June, January. Wow, a year, almost a year I've been waiting for this gun because they're in such demand. What it is is, that's a terrible grammatic construction there. What it is is an exact duplicate of a 365, except it shoots BBs as opposed to 9 millimeters. You have it magazine here, and the way it works is that you, it comes with a wrench, you unbolt this bottom, you slip in your basic CO2 cartridge, boom, tighten it down, push it in. And then right here is where you load the BBs. Here you go, these nice big, big round BBs. You load them here, just like this was a magazine. And when you're done with this, you now have a SIG 365 that actually shoots BBs. Why do you want this? What a training tool. What a great training tool. We've talked about this a couple of times, that the more you train, the better you are. And if, if uh, one of the things that I like to do, and we, we've talked about it before, is when I move to a new place, one of the things I, I typically will do with it is go through it with a gun, a blue gun or something, or a BB gun's even better. Uh, in the old days, I went through it with a Webley air pistol. And what I wanted to find is, should I have to accidentally shoot somebody in my house <laughs> who's broken in, I want to see angles. We talked about this on the best defense a lot. This is something Mike Janich is extremely, extremely big on. Understand how you might have to move through your house with a gun. Makes sense, doesn't it? It makes even more sense to go through your house without a real gun because that way no ugly, ugly cartridges can climb into the gun. 
So you can work your way around. Where's corners? Here, there, otherwise. You can do it with your finger, but the closer you are to reality, the better off you are. One thing you can do with this gun, the same thing I did with the old Webley single shot air, air pistol. I wanted to get a feel for what shots were like in my house. So what I did is I set up target boxes. And I would work a corner. Here's my shot, bang. I knew my houses extremely well. This is a tool that will help you do that. It's a tool that'll help you practice in the winter when it's like cold and all you can do is shoot in your garage. So, uh, Sig, great idea. One quick tease. Take a look at this. I'm not going to even talk to you about it very much. But you know what it looks like to me? It looks like to me a 458 SOCOM barrel from Tromex with a Tromex linear compensator on it. We'll talk about this soon. I'm Michael Bain. Find us on michaelbain.tv, YouTube. This is Triggered, and we will see you next week.